In this video, we're going to look at our display color spaces for our source monitor, our record monitor, and of course, for full screen. These are settings you may not be aware of, but they are very, very, very important whenever it comes to uh, viewing your footage accurately. So you know exactly what you're going to export uh, for your color levels here. Maybe you're going to keep as legal or scale from legal to full range, but let's just stick on topic here. What we're talking about is our display color space. Now, the first thing you need to know is no matter what I choose on our display color space, okay, no matter what I choose, it's not going to actually affect my footage. Okay, this is just how we're going to view it. So let's start off with our full screen playback. Now, the shortcut for full screen playback here on Windows is Control Shift F and Command Shift F. If you're on Mac, you can use that. You can also come up here to our composer and choose full screen playback. Okay. So that's the shortcut. Now let's come over here to our settings, double click full screen playback. Now by default, your display color space is going to be on project. We can click this here and now we can choose a different color space. Now that, again, like I said, this is very important uh, whenever it comes to your, your export. So if it's on project or in, in my case, REC 709, uh, these are going to be legal ranges again for me for my color space we're not going to get into that here we're just going to focus on our display color space here okay so these two will be exactly the same for me click okay there let's go to an area here and we'll go Control shift f you can see how that looks okay looks all right looks fine now let's come back here and now we'll choose our ec 709 full range so now we'll have the full range of colors we'll have zero to 255 uh, versus our legal range here which is going to be 16 to 235, okay? Don't worry about that, but these are the two I check most. Sometimes I might check sRGB. You may ask, why don't I check sRGB more? And it's simply because a lot of the things I deliver to, to YouTube, I found that uh, either REC 709 for our legal range or REC 709 for our full range, or even if I export at RGB levels, this is more accurate to what YouTube is actually going to display. That's just my experience, but you can also check sRGB if, if you want but let's choose REC 709 full range. Okay, Control Shift F, and you can immediately see the difference there. Now, if that's not stark enough for you, I can come down to an area like this in the timeline. Let's go back to our full screen playback, change this to REC 709, or again, in my case, project, they're going to be exactly the same. All right, Control Shift F, and you can see the color here of this media composer. You can see that it's not exactly the same as the colors here, that you're actually seeing right now because this video here is indeed exported with scale from legal to full range. Okay. So once again, control shift F, you can see those colors right there. Now come back to this media composer, you can see these colors here. All right, now if we come back to full screen playback and I'll change this to our EC 709 full range, click okay. Now control shift F back to full screen. And now you can see that the colors are exactly the same as uh, what you're seeing right now. Okay. So that's just very important to realize your display color space. Again, our display color space does not affect our actual videos. It's just what we're viewing it as, okay? So we can look something like this here, Control Shift F, you can see those colors. Again, we're on the full range right now. And the full screen playback, REC 709, and Control Shift F, you can see the difference right there. So hopefully you understand the power of our uh, display color space here. Now what I like to do is leave my full screen on REC 709 full range. Uh, I just usually leave it at that because I like to check my, uh, my footage in full screen just to see what it will, it will really look like. You know, if I'm, if I'm coloring something in Media Composer, I wanna make sure that I know what it's going to look like once I upload it to YouTube. So that's why I leave this on REC 709 full range, okay? Because again, I will usually export, of course this depends on scale from legal to full range. You can absolutely export as legal. I do that sometimes as well. It just really depends on what I'm doing, okay? But if I'm going to export as legal, then I'll definitely come in here and change this back to REC 709. I just want you to understand uh, why you need to check your, your color space. I, I already have another video covering this more in depth. We're not going to go in depth here, so you can go watch that video. And there's also another video linked in that video that will explain it even further. Okay, but let's just stick to our viewing modes here our display color space. We can also change our display color space in our source monitor and our record monitor. If you don't know which is which, there you go. Over here's the source, over here's record. All right, so in order to do that, you simply come up to either one of these monitors, right click, come down here to where it says display color space, and we have the same options 
that we had in our full screen playback. All right, so now if I change this to REC709, you see absolutely nothing changed. If I come here and do REC709 full range, now watch this screen there, boom, you see the difference? You see how the, how the dynamic range expanded there? Because now we're viewing this in, in a full range. Come back to display color space, you can check sRGB, you can see the differences right there. Back to project. I like to leave my source and record on project most of the time and I'll only come in here and uh, change them just to check footage, but I always try to remember to uh, move this back to project or REC 709. Uh, so that way I don't end up doing a bunch of work where I think it looks good, then I come in here, uh, you know, whenever I, I export and I end up exporting keep as legal. And now everything is going to be way, well, way too light if I work in a different color space, or if I view in a different color space. Okay. Now, same thing for our record monitor over here, simply right click, display color space, full range, you can see the difference right there. What do you say we, let's grab a clip here and we'll uh, load it up and uh, see this side by side. Let's go for something. This one's pretty good here. So we'll take this clip here. I'll just come on my timeline anywhere here and we'll just cut this in. So we have it in both of these monitors. Let me go ahead and move this one back to our display color space of project. Now you can see both of these images look exactly the same. Let's try to get her on um, about the about the same frame here. Something like that's pretty close. All right, so we can see right now these are exactly the same. Well, let's go ahead and view what this would look like in full range. Okay, so now we can easily see the differences here between these two clips and these different uh, display color spaces. Once again, my display color space does not affect how we export our footage. It just affects how we're seeing the footage. Okay, so remember that. So that is why you would want to check your different display color spaces, uh, depending on how you're going to output it, just to make sure you know uh, exactly how your footage is going to look once you export it. Again, I go into much more detail in this. This also comes into play for our import uh, here as well, but you can watch that other video to uh, see that in action. All right, so that is all for this video. Just remember your options here for your full screen playback, your display color space. You can change that to whatever you want. So whenever you go to full screen, you'll see you'll see your chosen display color space. You can change your source monitor. So I can change this to full range too if I want. And then change it back. Again, this does not affect the actual footage. And I can do the same thing here. These are all independent of each other. I can do the same thing here in our record monitor. Okay. Again, very important to check those, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, like I, like I said, importing and exporting, and uh, especially if you start doing any sort of coloring work on, on your clips. For example, we'll just use this here effect right here. Let's make sure this is on REC709, which it is. So if we came in here and we did a bunch of work uh, looking at this as simply legal, and then we were going to export it at full range, now we can see that's way too dark. Okay, you can do the same thing here, right click, and full range. And you can see that's way too dark. So I would need to come into my effect, you know, considering my export method, and probably turn that down. So we're not losing so much of her face there. All right. So that's the basics, you know, the very basics of why these settings are indeed very, 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 very useful. And you should know about them here in Avid Media Composer. Once again, I'll say it for the last time, pay careful attention to what you set your source and record monitors two here, okay? Again, I personally like to leave both of these on project, and I like to leave my full screen over here in settings. I like to leave this on, on full range, but I'll always keep in mind that I leave this on full range just in case I need to check something else. All right, so just be aware of what they're set at and make use of these uh, different display color spaces because they come in, they come in really, really handy to uh, check your material to know what it's going to look like on your final export. So that is your display color spaces for your full screen playback, your source monitor, and your record monitor here in Avid Media Composer.